Please. Automotive SIG update. Yes. Am I good to start early? Yeah? I think you can start early because we're not going to get, the other rooms are in the middle of a one hour talk, so okay. nobody's going to be coming over. Cool. Um, yeah, so this is a, a general update of all sorts of goings on in the um, CentOS Automotive SIG. Um, so for those of you don't, who don't know me, I'm Eric Curtin. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. I work mainly on automotive stuff. Um, oh, and I wanted to give special thanks to, to Sandro because um, I found this beautiful slide deck lying around and I asked him could I use it and extend it and embellish it and he said yes. Yeah. So um, thanks for helping me create the slide, slide deck. Um, so yeah, our SIG, our SIG is, is still relatively young. I think it's about two years old now. Um, so just to give a description of what it's all about, this is um, an example of an open hardware vehicle for, called, from a company called Open Motors. Um, it's, it's, it's a very bare bones framework. Um, it comes with no software, no electronics. It just has the minimal requirements for, for building a vehicle um, so you can make your bespoke custom changes on top to make your vehicle more individualistic. Um, so I kind of think of CentOS Automotive Stream Distribution and Drive Us, Red Hat and Vehicle Operating System. Um, it's it's kind of the software version of this, so building up your software in, in a vehicle um, s starts from the operating system. Um, so CentOS Automotive dis Automotive Stream Distribution, for short, sometimes we call it AutoSD, uh, enables you to do this. Um, so, just before I describe this um, slide specifically, um, our model is very simple. It's, it's very similar to the CentOS Stream Rel model, where CentOS Automotive Stream Distribution is based on CentOS Stream and we just have additional automotive repos that generally add extra automotive specific packages, except in the case of the kernel, we actually replace the kernel. Um, and same goes for Red Hat in vehicle operating system, that's based on RHEL and we add additional um, packages for automotive. Um, so because we're based on CentOS Stream and um, RHEL, the, the usual workflows for contributing to Fedora, Ipel, CentOS Stream, all, all apply, of course. Um, but for an automotive-specific change, we also have one other route for contributing. So this would be what's called in this slide, um, the CentOS Automotive um, SIG repos. Uh, so if you can contribute your change there, It'll, it'll make its way to CentOS Automotive Stream Distribution and which will eventually make its way to Red Hat and Vehicle Operating System. And then we have this kind of continuous certification and testing framework, so if anything pops up, the change is made into, into the repo and it propagates through the pipeline again. Um, so yeah, we receive all kinds of contributions from hardware vendors doing hardware enablement, from automotive vendors like General Motors or something like that um, for feature requests and whatnot. Um, sometimes software developers just want to add certain libraries that maybe aren't in CentOS Stream as the base. And we also work with other partners like um, Sophie and Eclipse STV. Um, so, so sometimes we um, include reference implementations for um, the standards that come out of those um, groups. And, oh yeah, so, so this is one of the few packages we actually replace. So we have our own automotive kernel. Um, this is like 99% to the same, 99% of the kernel that goes into CentOS Stream. Uh, the, the key difference is we, we use the real-time Linux patch set. Um, so basically the scheduler for this type of kernel that focuses on determinism and low latency. And sometimes I use this analogy um, to describe the whole real-time Linux thing for people that are familiar with. Um, let's say you're a driver of a vehicle and you hit the brake pedal. You would probably like the brakes to react quickly. 
uh, <laughs> um, and 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 within a certain certain time frame. So this is kind of what real real time Linux is all about, and it, and these kind of safety critical domains it's 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 often used. Um, so so yeah, there's a there's a focus on functional safety. There's there's specific certifications um, that we aspire to achieve for the operating system, and this is all about, um, yeah, basically reducing the risk factor. Um, ensuring every function is carried out as prescribed. Um, I've heard this analogy from a couple of people in automotive in the past, so obviously we can't ensure that bad things never happen, but like um, the analogy often used if, if if I give you a gun and, and you shoot yourself in the foot, um, that actually worked as designed. You just used it in a poor way. So <laughs> um, um, it's, a lot of that is going down to things like reading the man pages. Do the man pages say what actually happens when, this, when you actually call this function and execute the code? So it's, it's all that sort of thing. Um, and of course, there's performance standards. Um, we aim actually to be the first continuously certified Linux platform for road vehicles. Um, and this, this, it, this effort is kind of essential, to be honest, to the safety of automotive Linux distributions. We actually pump a lot of effort into this area. Um, oh yeah, another difference from, say, vanilla CentOS um, stream is we use OS3 kind of as our immutability solution. Um, a bunch of Red Hat based operating systems use this. Just the name three is Rel for Edge, Rel Chorus, and CentOS Stream Chorus, which, if I remember correctly, was announced at the last CentOS Connect. Um, so, what does OS3 provide? It, it, it has a lot of desirable qualities that are um, suitable for automotive. So, OS3 gives you atomic upgrades. So Say if you get a power cut in the middle of an upgrade or whatever, there's there's no such thing as a partially applied upgrade or whatnot. And there's also kind of a tool that complements OS3 called Greenboot. So once you do an update or install an extra package, when you reboot, there'll be health checks and you can mark a boot as successful or healthy or or bad or fail and in that case, you would obviously roll back. Um, so the atomic upgrades feature is desirable. Um, I started calling what OS3 does uh, directory-based AB updates because I've talked to partner in the past and saying, and they've often said, it, it's not um, AB, it doesn't do AB switching because you don't require A and B partitions. And that's not actually true. We just do... Um, we just do A-B updates in a different way. It's more directory-based rather than um, partition-based. Um, so yeah, we apply Delta upgrades because OS3 is basically like a Git repo for a file system. So you just apply the diff on top every time you do an upgrade. Um, so it provides immutability. Um, so like the file system is read-only, so you can't really change it that easily. Although I will say, if you're a developer, uh, there are some developer tools that can give you right access. Um, there was an interesting talk earlier about um, Secure Boot, uh, a kind of related, somewhat related project to OS3 at the moment is something Alexander Larson and Giuseppe are working on called ComposeFS. And basically what ComposeFS kind of does, it kind of extends the chain of trust further down to the file system. Um, so you can like um, detect malicious changes or bugs that cause data corruption or whatnot. Um, and something that we don't include in automotive stream distribution, but I think it's an interesting advancement at the moment in the whole OS3 ecosystem is there's a tool being developed called Bootsy, and what Bootsy is, it's, it's using, 
It's using OS3 containers as a transport and delivery mechanisms. So it's, it's, you're booting into a can container, but it's not a container per se, you're just using the, the protocol basically. Um, so that's kind of cool because it's kind of consolidating our um, transport and delivery mechanisms. But yeah, this is kind of a future thing. Um, oh yeah, going to more detail about ComposeFS, I left a, a link to a talk Alexander did there in the, in the GitHub repo. But um, yeah, there's, there's ongoing upstreaming in the Linux kernel and we intend on backporting that to, I suppose I should say sent to a stream because that's where it actually lands. Um, but eventually it propagates to rail and since we're based on those operating systems, excuse me, uh, we, we will be one of the users of this. Um, so yeah, as I said, it, it detects, um, it verifies the file system is the way it's supposed to be. Like in case your hard disk failed or something and there was disk corruption, it detects that kind of thing. Um, what else do we have? Oh, this is, this is, this was brought up in an earlier talk as well <laughs> about how we build the images. We do something slightly differently to the other SIGs. So you may have heard of Image Builder before. Um, the, the, the core kind of framework that um, Image Builder used to, to, to compose operating systems is called OS Build. So we just use that actually. Um, we're not so interested in the UIs on top, so we just kind of wrap some make files and scripts around um, OS build, um, and basically that's how we build our images. Um, we don't have Anaconda installers or anything like that either because um, people don't, well, 99% of people don't install their own automotive operating systems. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, I'm sure there's always the 1%. Um, uh, oh yeah, this is, this is just another diagram. Um, so we take, oh, I finally had to remember why we put in this slide. Um, one of the difference with, um, <laughs> one of the difference with differences with um, CentOS Automotive Stream Distribution and Red Hat and Vehicle Operating System is, although we provide sample images for you to play around with and develop on and whatnot, it's, it's actually generally the, the, the end customer that does the final build. Um, so they'll take all the CentOS stuff and they'll, they'll also add their packages and whatever on top and they'll actually do the final image build so then they get their own custom in, in vehicle operating system. Um, so yeah. These, these are some various communities we're involved with. Um, I'm more familiar with some than others, to be honest, the scope of this talk is a little large. But um, just to give you an idea of some of our partners we work on, um, on automotive standards and that kind of thing. Um, Actually, yeah, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the difference between CentOS Automotive Stream Distribution and Red Hat and Vehicle Operating System. And I'm actually going to go back a bunch of slides because there's something I forgot to say. On this slide, actually, there are some packages that only make it as far as CentOS Automotive Stream Distribution and don't make it further because uh, there's a distinction between the project and the products. And I'll just give you a simple example of some of those packages. Uh, we allow you to install CentOS Automotive Stream distribution on a Raspberry Pi to have a generic ARM environment to kind of play around with things. And we have a bunch of packages that enhance the experience on Raspberry Pi. Um, but those, those packages will probably not propagate to Red Hat and Vehicle Operating System, for example, because Raspberry Pi is not an automotive board. Um, <laughs> so, so, so sometimes there's a difference between like the, the CentOS Automotive Stream um, project and community and actually the, the final um, product. So 
Um, that's, that's something I forgot to talk about. Not, not every package makes it all the way. Um, and this goes, uh, the next group of slides are gonna show some slight differences between CentOS Automotive Stream Distribution and the final um, product as well. Um, so, so what is CentOS Stream Distribution made up of? We have a kernel. Um, we have a container runtime and all sorts of container-based tools. Um, we have an OTA framework that delivers security updates and that kind of thing. Um, we provide logging and mechanisms for monitoring and diagnostics, um, the, the usual system, D stuff, syslog, and that kind of thing. Um, we have uh, various tools for development. Um, we have a lot of health checking tools for various types of failure detection. Um, we have mixed criticality support. That's kind of like um, this whole software-defined vehicle approach has gotten very popular, and and one all most of the industry is is actually trying to reduce the number of ECUs in a car. Um, so boards now have to satisfy. Um, many different roles. Um, so this mixed criticality support is um, what this is all about, and I'm actually gonna briefly describe that in a slide later on. Um, on priority boot up, we're, we've been putting in a lot of effort trying to optimize our boot, because there's kind of an expectation in automotive to boot like really quickly. Often people talk about the two or three or four second boot or whatnot for different services. Um, and then there's Red Hat in Vehicle Operating System, which obviously has all these neat features, but then it has certain additional things on top. Um, so if you want the certified version, that's Red Hat in Vehicle Operating System. Um, and you also get very safety manuals and documentation and, and that kind of thing. Um, Here's another project that started in the automotive org. It's, it's called Hertzsche with, a, um, with an asterisk because um, it's going through a renaming process. I think it's on its third name now. So <laughs> hopefully we have the final name next time. Um, it's, it's a multi-node service controller. It's, it's kind of like a, a, a new container orchestrator, um, but it has alternative qualities. Um, that are different to traditional container orchestrators. So it, it aims to be deterministic rather than aim for uh, eventual consistency. Um, it's lightweight, there's a, there's a focus on performance. Um, and it's, it's, it's also very simple and like the lines of code count isn't exactly huge, which, um, which makes it easier to certify. Um, I left a link to a blog post and there was also a recent talk about that at DevConf that goes into more detail. Um, Q QM is kind of a related tool to Hertzsche. Um, this is something else we're working on. Um, it's kind of all about um, namespacing containers to make sure that they don't interfere with um, other workloads, because like some workloads in a vehicle are a lot more critical than um, than others. Um, like I don't know, the brakes might be more important than Netflix. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, so it achieves that using various tools like um, Hairchip, Podman, C Groups, Namespaces, SE Linux, uh, Podman, and actually an interesting thing about this. QM containerized environment, each container even launches its own instance of a system D. Um, yeah, so you'll hear a lot about ARM enablement um, in, in automotive, because 90% of the SLCs deploys, deploy the R, um, ARM based, so um, it's part of the reason I, I I've worked on some of the Asahi stuff with Davide and Neil. Their talk is soon. Um, but that's our focus. We're, we're also open to alternative architectures in future as the industry involves. Like we, we have our eyes on architectures like um, RISC-V and that kind of thing. So um, 
I wouldn't rule out those. Um, we also build everything on x86-64 also, um, which brings us to our next slide. That wasn't supposed to be the next slide. Uh, <laughs> um, which developer tools, yeah, we build, every, we build and publish everything for x86 also so people can develop on their laptops, like ThinkPads or whatnot. Um, so we have VMs, you can actually spin up an instance now in AWS. Uh, all the various container tools we, we have. We even have a container on Quay now, so you can use those for development. Uh, as I said, on x86 and ARM. Uh, we even have emulators if, if you need an ARM environment on your Intel-based machine. Uh, we actually even produce a Raspberry Pi bare metal image if, if you want a kind of a physical board to work on that doesn't break the bank. Um, and we have a lot of these artifacts are downloadable at this link. And there actually are further artifacts that, that you have to build yourself. But um, So now this slide. Um, these are some of our various publicly announced partnerships. Um, so GM, Qualcomm, Luxoft, and ETAS. Um, some of them are more related than others, but yeah, it's all part of the wider automotive SIG. Um, what else? Did I skip over anything? No, so, yeah, I think I, I think I said everything I was supposed to say. Um, these are just some things as an aside. One of the guys I know on the team asked me to, um, to spread awareness that the Fedora Robotics SIG is kind of being brought back to life. Um, so there's a lot of similarities between the stuff we're working on and the robotics SIG. So um, that's kind of um, a SIG that's getting some more attention now. And as we said, actually a huge, a huge focus in the automotive SIG is on ARM enablement um, with various automotive boards. Um, and Davide and Neil are actually doing a talk after this. Um, and it's around the enablement work we've been doing for Apple Silicon. And actually, I found that really useful because um, we talked about the Raspberry Pi in the past. Raspberry Pi, is, it's a 100 euro board, so it can be a bit slow. Um, so I actually find the Apple Silicon hardware, it's, it's, it's very useful if you're looking for a generic ARM development environment for Auto SD or other ARM-based operating systems. Um, these are some of our community contacts. You, you may have met them before, people in the room, but we have Jeff Rowe, who's our acting chair. Uh, he, he runs monthly meetings, which, which are quite nice if you want to learn more about the community. They're quite informal. Uh, we normally have a decent attendance of 20 plus people, so that's, that's a great way to informally just jump in and chat and speak informally about things you're curious about. We have Pingu, who works with Jeff Rowe. And we actually have Leo Rossetti. Leo Rossetti um, is often our point of contact um, for the SOFI um, community in Eclipse Software Divine Vehicle. Um, yeah, here are some various links to those monthly meetings I was talking about. Uh, Jeff Rowe posts most of them on YouTube in the end. Um, we have a GitLab where you'll see all our automotive artifacts. Um, if if you can't attend those, if you don't want to attend those monthly meetings and would just um, like to informally ask questions, I, f I find the matrix is very good, as well as the mailing list. Um, they're, they're all very responsive ways of, of communicating uh, with the community. Um, yeah, and that's kind of it, unless there are any questions. <laughs> Looks like I'm good. Thanks very much, guys. You made my job very easy. <laughs>